Chuh, bruh, you just got a new car? You need to get some coilovers, man. Gotta get more low. Are you staticed or bagged? Dude, the stock car, the, the suspension's just garbage. It just understeers. You gotta get rid of it right now. Who is that guy? What's going on, everybody? How many times have you heard statements like that? If I had to guess, if you've been on a forum, you've been on Instagram, or you've been a part of a Facebook group, you've probably heard statements like, you need coilovers, the stock suspension is garbage, and dude, you can get a set of coilovers like $1,000 from all these companies. So today, I'm here to kind of bust that myth. Um, there's a stigma about suspension, well, maybe not stigma, but there's a lot of preconceived notions about suspension, and particularly aftermarket suspension in the car world, and it really bugs me, and I've just seen so many posts on the forums and on the internet that are, are so misleading that I had to make a video about this, especially after I had all these issues with my uh, aftermarket coilovers um, over the last couple months. So this is gonna be that video. Buckle up, kids. It's gonna be a good one. the video, I think it's important we define what a coilover is. Now, most cars come from the factory with coilovers, actually. They're just not height adjustable. Uh, on some high-end cars, the dampers are actually adjustable from inside the cockpit, which is really cool. Uh, but in most cases, they're going to be externally adjustable uh, via a knob on the, on the shock or strut. And a coilover is just, well, like the name implies, it's a coil wound around a strut or shock and that's coilover. So look at it, your car's already got coilovers, you don't need to get new ones. Uh, but in the aftermarket, we call any aftermarket suspension that's height adjustable a coilover typically. Uh, so it's a bit of a misnomer, but it's just the name that it, that it has. So there's nothing wrong with that, but I just wanted to get what the definition of a coilover was and actually is out of the way. Okay, so let's get into the fun part and make some people angry. Most coilovers on the market, you've already seen them. They come in every color of the rainbow. They're ride height adjustable, which is separate from their preload. Ring any bells? It's a three-piece shock. Uh, you've seen these. I'll put in a generic picture. I will not name any names in this video, but you've seen these coilovers. They're everywhere in the market, and you can often get sets for as little as a thousand dollars. Well, even less, really, depending on the application, uh, but they're everywhere, and uh, I'm just gonna come out and say it. They're garbage. And hear me out for a minute. Let me, let me get to why they're garbage, actually, and how they're gonna make your car handle worse, not better. So before diving into this further, why do I bring up the three-piece design? Well, let's think about this for a minute. Have you ever seen a professional motorsports application using a shock designed like that? And I'm not talking about Formula Drift cars, although they are amazing at this point, I think, to see the amount of engineering that's gone into a drift car, uh, that's for a separate video. But outside of drifting, there is not a single professional motorsports application where a three-piece coilover is desirable. Now, I found this really handy-dandy diagram on the internet, and it touts all these amazing benefits of a three-piece coilover, and it's total lie. Here's why. With a three-piece coilover, if you think about it, what's the number one reason a shock company would want to do this? Any guesses? Cost. Cost savings is huge in the aftermarket parts industry, and margins are thin on these products. You have to think about import fees, you have to think about manufacturing costs, R&D costs, and the, and the list goes on. So suddenly, to bring a suspension to the market for a car, you have to save your pennies somewhere. So what these companies often do is they use the same cartridge for multiple applications. And there's a fancy shock manufacturer out there that does amazing motorcycle stuff, great mountain bike stuff, and their car stuff is, you know, outside of amazing construction quality, really questionable. And they only use three, count it, three different shock cartridges for all of their coilovers. That should tell you something right away. There is no way that those three, again, three shock cartridges are actually going to be optimized for whatever your car is. 
They're doing that to save money. That brings me to my next point. Three-piece coilovers lose suspension travel. And oftentimes, and I would say 99.99% of the time, because there's always gonna be an exception, they actually compromise the handling of the car because you have to give up either bump travel or droop travel. All of these companies are gonna tell you right away, you actually gain shock travel by using their product. But how does that work? Well, if you lower the car and you keep going lower and lower and lower, there's limits to how much the suspension arms can move, all the pickup points in a multi-link suspension. There's limits to how far those can move. So it doesn't do you any good if you dump the car in these coilovers and you have all this travel left over to go up, but you're gonna hit body parts or the suspension arms are gonna bind up or whatever's gonna happen. You're gonna have a control arm hit your chassis. It's a joke. None of this works. Oh yeah, and that same company, they're gonna tell you, you know what? Not only do you get more travel with our shock, but you don't get springs clanking around because you know the preload's already set. All of this is just marketing hype and gimmicks. A real motorsports shock doesn't have any of this. What is a motorsports shock anyways? Let's think about that. Well, any shock that's actually designed for a performance application that's going to be an improvement over your factory suspension, it's gonna have a from scratch design. And there's companies that do this. Uh, at the low end, you have Bilstein. They make a quality shock. Uh, you can't hate on them. They do all of their testing on the Nürburgring. Their production methods are sound, they're proven. They may not be the best for every application, but they get the job done. And from there, you know, the bigger your pocketbook gets, unfortunately, the better your shock you're going to get. Uh, so Penske, Moton, AST, Although I say that reluctantly, AST, I, I do have a bone to pick with you. MCS comes to mind, uh, 9 for 9 Racing and Super Miata in particular, they have campaigned and, and kind of been the champion, I think, of affordable motorsports level shocks. Uh, so the Zeta coilover for the Miata, if you have one of those out there, I know I got a set of Zetas on mine. Uh, shocks like that, those are from scratch designs that are designed to lower the car a certain amount. So if you want to just get low, Go get some airbags or get whatever cheap coilovers you want and dump your car. That's that's on you. This is all about performance applications. So uh, if you're into just lowering your car because you like a lower car, that's cool. I, I can totally dig that, uh, but this video is not for you. Uh, if you're interested in actually making an improvement on your car's handling and whatnot, that's who this is for. You need a motorsports shock, and why is that? So motorsports shocks are a certain length, and you'll adjust your ride height by moving the spring perch up and down on the threaded body. And with a three-piece coilover, they call that preload. And really, that's the right way to adjust your ride height. You don't want to adjust your ride height by changing the length of your shock. That makes no sense. Like, zero. You just, you're gonna be hitting all sorts of body parts. You're gonna rip fenders off if you screw up the, you know, the installation or you get the, the measurements wrong. It's a recipe for absolute disaster and I really couldn't recommend it to anybody. Um, so back to motorsports shocks, you actually adjust that ride height by moving the spring perch up and down. And how do you keep your springs from clanging around? It's called helper springs or tender springs. Super common in motorsports applications because the shocks often have more stroke. So you actually need that helper spring to push it all the way down on droop travel and that's what actually keeps the wheel in contact with the ground, and it's gonna, A, ride better, B, keep the wheel on the ground, which means more traction, and you're gonna go faster. It's really simple. Now, I know the next question is, but Sean, I can't afford a $4,000 set of shocks, and you know what? I get it. I can't either. So what are your options if you have a budget? Okay, well I already said one. Bilstein PSS coilovers, they're a fantastic choice if you're on a budget. They're quality made, they have a really good lifespan, and they're cheap to revalve. So if you decide in a season or two, you wanna make some change to your car and get them revalved, it's totally doable, it's affordable. Um, I'm also gonna just say it, springs and shocks are great. If you find the right lowering spring and the right shock, even a Coney Yellow, it's not the best thing in the world, it's a lot better than a cheap thousand dollar coilover. And I'll tell you what, I would rather have a set of Coney Yellow shocks and a quality lowering spring over any cheap coilover, period, end of story. It's just a better tool for the job. Uh, so those are your budget choices. As you move up, you'd wanna look at companies maybe like Crown Control. They do make Coney's with threaded sleeves. 
They're not bad, they're steel bodied, so they don't dissipate heat as well. But again, it's gonna be a lot better than most of these cheap coilovers out there. And from there, you really wanna look at companies that will make a product specifically for that chassis. So the Super Miata guys with the Zeta coilovers, it's a great example of a from scratch design. Maximum Motorsports comes to mind if you have a Mustang, uh, and the list kind of goes on. So it's up to you to do a little bit of research for whatever car you have to find the right company that's going to give you the right product. And maybe that is a set of JRZs. And you know, if you have a weird application that nobody makes anything for, there's companies out there to help, like Inertial Lab. They'll get you a custom set of shocks. It won't be cheap, but it's okay. This is an area you can really never spend enough money, and it pays dividends. High-end shocks, they perform better at the racetrack, they last longer, and they actually ride better than a lot of the cheap aftermarket options. And that's just a byproduct of it being a quality shock, not necessarily its goal. So it won't ride as good if you triple the spring rate, but you know, you can't have everything when it comes to modifying the car if you wanna go faster. So I know this video is a little bit out there, and there's gonna be a bajillion questions that spawn from it, but that's the idea. I wanna spark some conversation. I want you guys to make better decisions about how you modify your car. And that's kind of my resolution for this year is less is more and get out there and drive. So this is one good way to do it. Get a quality set of shocks if you're serious about going to the track or autocross and put the seat time in. You won't regret it. Till the next video, I'm Sean with The Driver's Perspective.